So family, we are on the top floor and this is our last exhibition before we break. And as with uh, these museums, a lot of information. So we can only really spend so much time and, and go through it. So some of these museums, you know, you need a whole day to experience the experience. So as we close, just want to make sure that we give you a nice little feel of the top exhibition. So he's the only one to be able to defeat the German government in an open battle. So one of the things is that he actually had secret deal with, with some Arab countries, traders, and they gave them guns. So they, they decimated the German military the first time. Then the, the Germans went and got support from the Berlin, that came from Germany. When they came, they almost captured him. So he decided to shoot himself, him and all his other people. But when the Germans caught the body, they cut off his hand and took it to Germany. Oh man, that's so silly. So it was that turn. That man did not turn it because that's a European. So it was so more like a scare tackle? Right, because they did the same thing to the British. He resisted? No, okay, no. Yes. He resisted? Yes. So when he when he defeated them, when they, they when he shot himself and killed himself, they decapitated him and took it to Germany. But after independence, we were able to return his head to Tanzania. So it's in a family museum in Iran. Yes, he shot himself. Rather than being captured, he shot himself. So and this one is the most deadliest resistance movement I would have said in Africa, not East Africa. So this one is called the Maji Maji. You know what Maji means, right? Maji. Maji Maji. Maji means water. So the chief before the war went and we had a secret medicine and put it in the, in the water and gave them everybody to drink. That if somebody drinks it and somebody shoots you, you just say Maji and the bullet will turn into water. Wow, powerful. So, but suddenly it didn't work. So thousands and thousands died, but also thousands were captured. And after being hanged, they were all decapitated also. Over 5,000 to 2,000 were decapitated and the head were taken to Germany. Who, who captured? The Germans captured them? Yes. So this one is after some of the leaders were captured, and it was before the war that were, when they were encamping before the war. So in total, uh, we have over like 10,000 heads, human heads from different parts of Africa that are still in different Ger yes. German museums and universities that we are working on in China. So it's a problem. And also the German government had a status of taking pictures before they hung you, so you can see some of the chiefs that were captured. So all these pictures that they are taking them, they are going to be hanged, and then later some of them are captured also. Okay. So something like that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, it's, uh, so in here when they are using African as labors to create roads during the German colonial period, but also Africans were used as transport uh, help them in transport as you can see. So when they, when they got the cheese, that was the fear, they put fear in the people. Yes. Not to resist. They start with the strongest. So they started with the cheese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is from a German sheep that was sunk in 1914. This was a stelling from a German war sheep that sank. Mostly manually operated, but also Africans were in the ship. Was in the wars, they also involved a lot of Africans in the war, in the, the ships. The so the family. The the family. Such family. Now you know why we call them uh, white devils. Yeah? How can they do it, sir? So? They do know. I've been traveling to Africa for 18 years, and every country, from country to country, all of these stories are prominent. 
by different colonization and colonizer. So whether it's the British, the French, the Spanish, the Germans, and so on. The colonial period. That's the thing I wanted to end with. You don't hear too much about it. So I thought I thought it was very difficult. So first, this is the museum. As you can see, family, a lot of young generation in the museum because we gotta we gotta educate our generations. I think it's one thing that will be more interesting. So like Africa was really developed before the coming of any colonial. And actually, Africa was more important than particularly for trade. So you can see this one, this bed is from the 18th century. It was from the Sultanate of Cuba, one of the largest sultanates in Africa at that time. So this bed was actually, itself was a gift from, the, from the, his grandfather in the 18th century. So it's very unique, it has two doors, one door here, one door there. It's a bed. Right? And it's a bed, yes. So it is very unique. But also they had the largest mosque. You can see this picture. This, but it was destroyed during the areas coming of the colonial period. Those walls sort of destroyed. But it was the largest mosque. It was built in the 12th century. So you can see how much developed the world at that time. Okay, you see that's a mosque. Yeah, so like, most of the sultanate, as you can see, it is under the uh, Arabic influence. So this is the mosque. It was the largest mosque in Africa at that time. It was, very, it was very important. But one thing else is that Kiru had their own money, the money that they used. And you can see some of the money right here. For instance, some of the money was They also had to lay, like, they didn't put the faces of the leader token and the faces of the enemy. I but also through trade, you can see this port is from China, this port right here. It's from China, from the 15th century. So you can see one of the earliest trading systems that we have. We have a lot of trading systems, but mostly importantly, one thing that shows the huge development of Africa is that picture right there. So that's the picture of the Sultanate of Kiru. So you can see, like, this is the, this is the painting of Kiwa, the city state that had that bed and the most. So this is a picture drawn in the year 1588. So it was way before the coming of colonial. So it shows the huge development of that state at the state. But if you read the name Kiwa, you can only find remnants of that, of that city. So they, when they came, they destroyed a lot of it. Because it's real hard to control people when they are like they have their own development and their own thinking. So it's one of the reasons that all the city was destroyed. Right? So I think, uh, I've never seen so many children at, at a museum. This is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Teach them while they're young. Yeah. So actually they usually come Teach them lot. while they're young so they grow strong and then let's change the future of our dynamics. So this part is Ontology, so that because of your time, that's where you could have gone there and see a little uh, bit. We can just make a quick walk around. Okay, so there's a, can take a wee quick walk in the Ontology exhibitions. I mean, family, you can spend a whole day at this museum. It's that incredible. It is a beautiful thing. Dinosaur bones, some dinosaur bones that are found in Tanzania. What kind of bones? Dinosaur bones. Dinosaur bones. Million years old? 160, 90 million years. Wow, alright. So, yes, lots of information, lots of information. Lots of information. We're also encouraging you, family, when you come to well, it's Arusha, Dar es Salaam, hit up some of these museums and check out the history and the culture and share with family and friends. So this one is one of the oldest evidence of bipedalism in the world. So these footprints are over 3.6 million years old. Wow. In Morongoro, in Arusha. 
I, you know, I have got to go there one day as far as uh, that safari. Yes. The point that in Morongoro there's animals, but there's the oldest remains of evolution we have found in Morongoro, in Arusha. So there's safari, but also there's a museum and a lot of artifacts are found there. No. Ethiopia, they found a, a complex uh, of uh, Lucy, they call him Lucy. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's not a footprint, it's almost a full uh, remains of the, of the Lucy, Atropisca sapiensis. So this one is the footprint of the similar species as Lucy, Atropisca sapiensis. So how old is this? 3.6 million. Wow. You've been on the planet that long? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it took us 2,000 years. Evolution. Evolution. So here we have an uh, elephant long horse. Wow. So this is the humerus of an elephant. Oh, you have a song. It's coming from the wind, wind, wind. Hey, what's going on right here? Yes. Now, this is. So that is a uh, homo habilis. So that's where you will start it, like using stone tools to hunt and also cut meat. I guess someone will ask, why do the people look like they're more of like. Monkeys? Yeah, I didn't want to say it, but yes. Is that is that real? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a you know. Um, is that is that like a real evolution? You think, us, brother Sully? What's that? How far, far as our people look? Uh, I don't think so. I, I, yeah, I don't think we. So, I, I, I always thought this is how we look. But I guess it depends on who is like funding the, the push of it. I mean, this is this is interesting. Uh, I thought we were more about yeah. Yes, the original you before that they didn't eat meat. Alright. So for example, like um, you can see this car right there you're looking at. So that's the, the first car to be found in Africa. Zinjatropa. The first car to be found in Africa and was found in Tanzania. So it did eat meat. So it was mostly eating like um, fruits and have seeds and nuts, all of them, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, all of them, even at that time period on the footprint that we saw, all those things. But later, that's when they started hunting in the field of Homo Hadley, like that's when they started hunting this. But before they didn't eat meat. And it's like, what do you mean? And uh, later, they stopped eating meat also came back to the field. So that's what you can, you can see that some, uh, we have some tribes that, yes. What did you know about that part of history? A lot of us don't even know about that. No, we're yeah. original vegetarian. They were. They were. Yeah, we just drink. Yeah. Nothing came from animals. I, I, I think uh, Dr. Apple was breaking that down. Yeah, he was. The monster don't hunt animals. Don't, don't like, eat the wild animals. They don't. So they just eat the animals that they eat. Yeah. So they don't. They don't. <laughs> you should know that part. Thank you. No problem. So, family, I hope you have enjoyed. We are wrapping it up. There's probably more we can show you. It has to be about over a thousand children in this museum. Very impressive. We have never, I've never seen so many children in a museum. And that is a great thing. That's very impressive.
this American section, uh, not much we're gonna show you, but uh, this, that's a part. That's a part of the museum exhibition. Well, family, we're gonna close on the National Museum here in Dar es Salaam, and we're gonna break for some shopping and for some lunch. <laughs>